Hi, Eric Archer here from Texas Instruments, and today's smart space video lesson is going to go over the differences between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells with uh, Ty Cook. Ty Cook is a middle school science teacher that's going to go through this lesson with us. Hey, Ty, uh, tell us about the differences. Yeah, hey, Eric. We actually have a special guest as well. Sue is my classroom pet. This is my Holland Loft rabbit. And she is going to help explain some of the differences because we're going to be talking about first eukaryotes and eukaryotic cells are animal cells. So those are the types of cells that make up our bodies as humans. They're the types of cells. They might be different, but the types of cells that make up Sue, my Holland Loft rabbit. And so we want to talk about what are the differences between the cells that make up plants and animals, which are eukaryotes, and then, of course, our prokaryotes, which we'll get to next, and those are the bacteria and archaea. So Sue is just going to hang out with us, if that's okay with y'all at home. She is about three years old, and she's been in my classroom, but since I'm at home for summer break, she comes home with me. So she had nothing better to do. So eukaryotes... She looks pretty have, comfortable. She is. And, you know, she actually misses being held by my students because they pet her, they give her way too many treats. So she's ready yeah. to act <laughs> ASAP because she gets a lot of love. Um, but let's talk about what are the major things that make up eukaryotes and what do they all have in common? Um, our cells, and if you don't know, let's stop right there. Cells are the things that build our entire body. I always envision like these tiny little Legos that build up what becomes the actual organism itself. And cells are the building block of all life. They have organelles inside of them, and organelles are tiny little specialized structures, like little organs, that have jobs that help us live and survive and thrive. And they do so many important things for us. And the cells in our bodies as eukaryotes have a couple of things in common. We are multicellular, meaning that we have many, many cells. Humans have 30 something trillion cells in our body. And so those cells, they all have these things in common. They are with a nucleus. The nucleus, and I'm gonna try to zoom in on this, the nucleus is the brain of the cell. It's the thing that is, has all the information, the DNA, the genetic information that tells our bodies everything that we need to do. And so I always also equate it to being the boss. It tells everybody what to do, bosses them around and you know says, this is your job. That's the nucleus. So all of eukaryotes have that nucleus, that central command post in their cells. The second thing they have is you can look right here. This is an animal cell. And we know that it's an animal cell because it's round compared to our plant cell, which is more rectangular. But what these both have in them, you can see all the organelles, membrane bound organelles. And because we are multicellular, we're really complex, which means there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things that happen in our bodies. And we have these little structures, the membrane bound organelles that are helping carry out all of those really important jobs. So that's the second difference. We said that they have a nucleus, they have membrane bound organelles. And then the last thing is that all of these features lead us to have, well, we're larger in size. These are larger cells compared to prokaryotes. We have specialized cells. Now I want you to stop and think, what does it mean to specialize in something? You know, if somebody specializes, let's say you're on the football team and you specialize, you know, in being a running back. Well, why do you do that? Well, when we specialize in something, we practice and do that one thing over and over and over, and we become really good at that one job. It's kind of like Henry Ford's assembly line. He realized that when one person in the assembly line does something over and over, they become really quick at it and they make less mistakes. So specialization, because we have trillions of cells, our cells can all do something specifically and do it extremely well because we have lots and lots of cells. Um, and then we have a longer life. As multicellular organisms, 
we have many cells in our body. So if one single cell gets damaged, worn out, defective, or dies, we have tons of new cells being made every second. Just during this video, your body's created new cells. So we can replace those, and our life is not limited to that single cell because we're multicellular. So Sue is a eukaryote, and I always tell students, let's see if we can get an up close of Sue. She loves the camera, I'm telling you. So Sue is a hollow glob, and she's an animal, which means she has eukaryotic cells, that build her body just like us as humans. And I always tell my students, if you're on the test and you're trying to remember, okay, eukaryotes, prokaryotes, you are eukaryotic. You are a human that is multicellular. You've got a nucleus, you have membrane bound organelles and you have you know, all of those things that are great benefits, you know, we're larger size, specialized cells that do those things really well and then we have a longer life. So those are all the benefits of being eukaryotic and multicellular. So Sue is going to go get a snack and we're going to talk about next our prokaryotic organisms. So Sue is snacking, but we wanna move on and talk about prokaryotes. So we were talking about eukaryotes and we said, and you know this, you are eukaryotic, but what are prokaryotes? So we said that our eukaryotes are bigger organisms, they're multicellular, and our prokaryotes are basically the exact opposite. And that's what I always tell my students. It's so easy because everything is almost exactly the opposite. We said that eukaryotes are really large and prokaryotes are really small. In fact, prokaryotes are single-celled organisms, which means that one cell makes up their entire body. That is them. Their whole existence is one single cell. So we know that if it's just one single cell, well, that's gonna be really hard to see, right? These are microscopic organisms that we can't really see with our naked eye, but if we're using a microscope, we can magnify and see these organisms. So prokaryotes, they are single-celled or sometimes we say unicellular. One cell makes up their whole body. Now, uh, we have two types of prokaryotes. We've got archaea, and then we also have bacteria. And today, I want to focus on bacteria because this is the one that y'all probably think a lot about. And my students usually say, bacteria? Like, that's the stuff that gets us sick, right? And I say, well, there's good and bad bacteria. These single-celled organisms we have living within our body. And I teach my students when we cover the human body systems about all the bacteria that live in our digestive system and they help us break down food. So it's a symbiotic relationship, which is meaning that they help us get nutrients from the food we eat, which is positive, and then we help them because we take in food, which becomes food for them. So bacteria can be good for you, just like bacteria that you find in yogurt can really help your digestive system. But prokaryotes, we said, are single-celled. And I want to actually show you what a bacteria looks like. This right here, this bacteria, looks kind of scary, actually, in this image. Like, I don't know, something that might be like out of our cartoon as the villain. But this um, bacteria cell is labeled, and it's really not as complex as what we were looking at when we saw our eukaryotic cells. Our eukaryotic cells, they have so many organelles and little organs within them. But here, we've just got a few things, and I want to point out what these are. We've got the DNA, and this is a big difference. The DNA here, which DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, that is the information for everything about this organism. It's stored in that DNA. Well, the DNA in a prokaryote is just floating freely within the cell. It's not in that nucleus. We knew that the nucleus was the brain of the cell for eukaryotes, and that's where the DNA is stored here, but there's no nucleus in this prokaryote. So there's another thing about prokaryotes. We said unicellular, they do not have a nucleus. And then the next thing is, we can also see that there's no membrane bound organelles. Let's look right here. You'll see on the animal cell, we've got the mitochondria, we've got the endoplasmic reticulum, we have 
all of these little organs, but we don't see those in the bacteria cell. So that's another key difference. No membrane bound organelles in our prokaryotes. Um, then if you look, we've got the cytoplasm. That's the fluid that everything is floating within and contained in, in our prokaryote. And we've got the flagellum. And that is really important because that flagellum is actually what is gonna help this bacteria move around and travel. So that tail is gonna propel it and really help it um, on its journey. So again, just to summarize our prokaryotes, we said, They've got some things um, that are basically the opposite of our eukaryotes. They are unicellular, single-celled. One cell makes up their whole body. They are the smallest cells on Earth compared to eukaryotes, which are large. Um, they don't have a nucleus. That's number two, so no brain of the cell. And number three, they do not have membrane-bound organelles. So we said, just to kind of summarize, eukaryotes, those are our plants and animals. You and I, we're eukaryotes. Um, they do have a nucleus. They've got that brain of the cell. They have membrane-bound organelles, which you can see right here, that help us have specialization where these cells can all do specific jobs and do them really well. We have a lot longer life expectancy because we have trillions of cells and we have larger size. And then our prokaryotes, those were the single-celled unicellular organisms they do not have the nucleus, they don't have membrane-bound organelles, one single cell, and they are limited to the life of that one cell because if that cell dies, well, that's their whole being. So those are some of those really key differences that are important when we're talking about cells because cells are the building blocks of every organism. Every organism is built of these little cells and they help us function and keep us alive. So they're very important. And I know, Eric, you had mentioned that you have a really cool activity from TI that students could look at if they wanted to learn more. Yeah, thanks, Ty. That was a, a, a great summary of the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And I loved how um, you have that sort of uh, way to remember that uh, you are a eukaryote. So, so thanks for that. And yeah, uh, so on the on the TI side, we have uh, we have a pretty cool um, set of activities that you can find at this website www.scienceinspired.com, and you can run these on a TI Inspire graphing calculator or the TI software, and you can download the TI software from our website also. Um, but but uh, kind of going in inside the uh, the eukaryotic cells, we have a a little simulation that you can use to sort of understand the organelles that you mentioned earlier um, and, and learn a little bit about the different functionality that each of those organelles, uh, you know, enables, uh, you know, the, the cell to, to, to take advantage of. And so we spend a little bit of time talking about the nucleus and, and, the, and, and you know, and the parts in the nucleus like the nucleolus, um, and then the differences between the, uh, the cell wall and the, um, uh, and the cytoplasm, uh, or I'm sorry, the cell wall and the cell membrane of the um, of the animal cell and the plant cell. So uh, you can see that here. And then if we go over to the plant cell, same kind of thing. Um, we can look and see what the, uh, the the things that are common, things that are different. So for example, a chloroplast exists in the plant cell, but there is no chloroplast in an animal cell. But both of these cells are eukaryotic. Um, both of these cells have organelles, have a nucleus. Um, you know, uh, uh, but there, there there are differences between cells within sort of the eukaryotic cell family as well. Yes, and we talk about that a lot. So after we cover this, that's exactly where we head, and we start talking about how those eukaryotic cells are different, and that's a really big point in seventh grade. We've got to know how are plants able to produce their own energy, and what are the things that allow them to do that? And then how are animal cells different? So that's a great thing for students to go look into because that'll lead them to the next point. Very cool. Well, Ty, thanks so much. That was, this was a great video. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.